Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge, and I'd like to introduce you to my Flower Pro Fern Mold. This innovative mold allows you to make ferns in multiple sizes to use on cakes and also to use on cookies and other confections. So let's get started. So here we have my Flower Pro Fern. So this is the Flower Pro Fern mold. Um, as you can see here, this has got multiple cavities. This will make the small frond. The frond is the sort of side pieces of a fern. So basically almost like the leaves we call fronds. So this is the small, this is the medium, this is the large. And then this is uh, the tip, uh, which I use on most of my ferns in, a, in collaboration with these pieces here. And then this is a larger fern, which again, you can use as is, or you can use that with the side wired uh, components. Um, so this is actually, as I said, uh, was introduced when we started Flower Pro. And then this is the brand new uh, fern back and embosser. So this is a back veiner, uh, which actually was going to give you uh, the back veining, as you can see here. So you'll have this beautiful veining onto the back of your ferns. And again, very innovative in the way it's been designed because it just sort of drops into position, as you will see. And this enables you to make ferns that are going to have um, sort of lovely veining onto the back of them as well. Okay. And um, so the fern is, as I said, uh, this is the back veiner. And then also I have a second video, which is using the fern mold as embossers for cookies and cakes. So in that video, I show how to use this to emboss sugar paste or rolled fondant on a cake board, how to do cookie veneers, and then also using this one as well. So check that out also. Now, when we are using the fern mold, uh, we're going to, first of all, in uh, book one, so in book one of Flower Pro, okay? So this obviously in book one, this shows the fern. And you will see here going through the, the book, the fern is used in lots of different um, ways. Here I have this in a rustic um, cinnamon basket topper. And uh, so there is a separate YouTube on how to create this, but you'll see how the ferns have been used in here. I also have ferns here on this cake. So I've got ferns used on the bottom of the cake. Those were used as individual wired components. So there you'd actually just take the individual fern pieces and just use them as is, okay? And then um, I also have in here from the front cover of the book, you can see here a sort of a lovely spray there where I've used ferns and I've used a combination of wired components and then also the smaller tip part as well of the fern. The fern can also be used in the filler flower mold. Um, I also, on the filler flower mold video, I showed how to use the ferns for, um, so here you can see the actual ferns, the tutorial of the ferns. But here in the filler flower mold, I actually use those also for mimosa leaves. So you can use these when you make mimosa in the ultimate filler flower, you can use the fern leaves for that. So very, very useful, um, as I said, uh, sort of uh, foliage to use. And you can see here, this is a, uh, just shows some of the sort of scope of color. So as far as like paste, I'm today in this uh, particular uh, video gonna use just like a moss green color. Uh, this is a Renshaw green or grass green in the UK. Um, but you could basically color, start off with a sort of more of a limey green color. You can see like this one here is just like a little bit more of a brighter green. You could start off with also a little bit more of a sort of a dull, uh, like a little bit of brown added to it, a little bit of yellow, because you can also, um, when we come to dust these, you could of course change this one as dusted with a sort of chocolate color on more of an olive green colored paste like bracken. So you can do different color combinations depending on how you're going to use the fern. For example, here on this topper, um, so you can see here the ferns, this is on my Flower Pro hoops, but these are quite a bright green, almost like a pea green color because I have that bright green in the hydrangea. So I wanted to sort of give that sort of same color balance at the tips. So these actually started off as more of a pea green color, a bright green, and then obviously it matches in beautifully with the hydrangea. So as I said, lots of different options on color. Now, when you're working from the book, uh, in your book number one, and uh, obviously all of these numbers I will mention also during the video, but there is a chart here, which of course goes through showing you uh, the different sizes we're gonna use and the different gauge wires. So for the three wide single leaves, the small, the medium, large, we're gonna be using 28 gauge wire. It actually doesn't matter here whether you use green or white wire. And then we'll be using a 26 gauge wire for the uh, tip here. And then we're going to be using a 24 gauge wire for this longer fern here. Okay. And uh, so let's get started on making the ferns. 
So I've prepped my wires here. Um, so we have, these are 28 gauge wires, quarter length. So you just cut the wire into four pieces. Uh, this will be the 26 gauge wire I use for the single tip. And then these are for the 24 for the long frond, uh, the large fern. Now I use a magnet. A magnet is a great way just to keep your wires organized, especially when you're working with multiple wires, it makes it very easy to use. And um, we're going to start off by measuring. Um, so we're going to follow your directions. So we're gonna uh, measure off, we're going to take a number four size ball of paste. Now I'm going to use, as I said, this is just sort of almost like a moss green color. Um, this is a pre-colored gum paste, flower paste. And uh, with the size guide, uh, so remember in the back of all three books, book one, book two, and book three, you do have a size guide in the back of the book. And uh, so you've got your size guide here in the back of the book. So of course you can just cut this up. We recommend you just cut this out and just cut, don't pull, don't pull the size guide out of here because you'll damage the spine, okay? But you can just cut down there. And then of course you just cut around the outside of this and you have a size guide. We also have added to Flower Pro, um, we have added a new plastic size guide. So this is made from a thin plastic along with also the Flexi Scraper, which is a new product. And, uh, but this as I said is the same sort of thickness as the, um, as I said, the size guide. And uh, so this makes it very durable. You can wipe this clean and obviously it's not going to get bent or damaged like the cardboard one will. Now we're going to measure off uh, for our, um, as I said, inside pedals here for our small pedals. As you can see, we're gonna use um, here, number four size ball of paste, okay? So we're gonna measure so this is actually the only one that is measured the regular size, which means remember one third below two thirds above. So we're gonna take a number four size ball of paste. We're gonna pop that onto, the, onto here like that. So there's approximately one third below the hole and two thirds above the top. Now we use this as our master size. Now, of course, if you were doing say ferns on a wedding cake, you might be making, for example, 16 of these or 20 or 24. Um, and uh, so then you just make additional balls of paste. So you're just gonna use this as your master size. So you just would make as many balls of paste as you need. And you're just gonna put these underneath a pot. I'm using a little silicone mat, and then I have a little cup underneath there. And I would recommend you just do, for example, the small ones, all of your small ones first, then measure off for the medium, and then measure off for the large. Now, when we use the fern mold, um, we're going to First of all, take the fern mold. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of vegetable fat, vegetable shortening in here. Um, and uh, I'm gonna take this. Now you can use your finger, but also something else I find works really well. I just use a brush. This is actually a stenciling brush. It's just got sort of uh, short bristles. So I just keep this for that purpose. So I'm just gonna use just a little bit of vegetable fat shortening from the top of the mold. And I'm just gonna just put this into the cavities, all right? So you can just take a little, you don't need a lot of this but the brush is good because it gets into all of the areas. Now, when we finish with the mold, all right, so once we've actually finished with the mold, we will use um, a little bit of dish soap, some washing up liquid on here, and then that will ensure that this, uh, as I said, uh, cleans, cleans off the fat. You can also put the molds into a dishwasher as well. And once you've got the vegetable shortening fat onto here, you just uh, can do as many leaves as you want. You don't have to put any more, unless the paste starts to stick. On a lot of my Flower Pro shallow molds, you see I use this technique. Now, when we use the, when we do this flower, we're going to take your 28 gauge wire, the leaf, we're going to take 28 gauge wire here, okay? And with my 28 gauge wire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little ball of paste. So this is my number four size. And I'm just going to touch my finger, literally just touch my finger on my vegetable, shortening my fat. And I'm just going to do what we call condition the paste. So we're just going to condition it make it into a little carrot shape. And then I'm gonna dip the end of this into some egg white. We can also use glue. I prefer to use egg white. Now, because this first one is short, I'm just using this, um, the depth of the egg white there. So you'll see on the larger ones, I will use a brush. And I'm gonna insert the hook, the, um, insert the wire into the paste. So it pretty much goes right the way to the end of the carrot, okay? And then I'm going to just use my fingers with a little corn flour cornstarch on them. I'm just gonna make that and pinch around the bottom, and I'm gonna make that to the approximate size of the fern. Now you'll see on the fern molds, we have this little channel, all right? This little channel, which is a sort of a characteristic of most of my Flower Pro molds, enables the wire to sit there perfectly. Okay, and then all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a cosmetic sponge, and just gonna put a cosmetic sponge into there, and 
just going to press this in with my cosmetic sponge. Now you can also, another way you can do this, um, you can also use your uh, Dresden tool as well. So you can push this in if there are any little areas, but generally I just use my cosmetic sponge and you see that will fit the mold perfectly. Now, you don't have to use the back veiner, but this is going to, of course, make the back look more realistic. So you're going to take the veiner, and as you can see, this is just going to basically match up. So where you have this top tab, it's going to match that up, and it just sort of slot. You'll find it will just feel, it just sort of slots into place. And then all we're going to do there is just going to just press this on with your finger, and you can see when you have then put the back veiner on, it's going to vein it. And then what I normally do is just going to give it a little press like that, and then with the small one, you can just pull that out. It will just release very, very easily. And you can just use a pair of scissors or your nail, just trim off a little bit of that bottom paste, just mold this around. And then you're going to use, give your fern a little bit of shape. So I'm just gonna use my thumb and finger to create a slight taco like a V shape, okay? And as you can see, you're going to then just place these onto, so literally I just lay these onto some crepe foam. This is a crepe foam convoluted foam former, and it just gives your leaves just a nice natural shape, especially when you come onto the bigger ones, all right? It's not so important on these small ones. You could just use regular foam, but just put them on foam. The reason why I use foam is the air will get to the underneath of these as well. So that is how we do the small, the small one. And then uh, when we move on to the medium size one, so all of, the, all of the next size up, so the next one is gonna be a number six small, and then number seven small, number eight small, number nine small. So what this means on the next one, all right? Now, of course, when you're making ferns, um, you would uh, decide on how many you're going to make. Now, as you can see here, this just shows some different configurations. This shows sort of a smaller fern. This shows a larger fern. So as you can see on this particular one here, I just have two wide uh, small leaves, okay? This is the tip, all right, which is this part here. Okay, so that's gonna be the tip, uh, which will be actually, that's what it looks like, okay? So you're always gonna have one of those, all right? Or you can also do the fern with the longer, uh, this is the longer fern, all right? If you want a longer, skinnier fern. So you always have just one of those at the end. But as far as like how many you make of the small, the medium, large. So this one has got two small leaves, two medium leaves, two large leaves, okay? And as you can see, this is a lot larger. So this has got actually four small, four medium and four large, all right? So you always are working in um, even numbers, two, four, six, eight, all right? So it depends really on how big the cake is or the project you're going to be making as to how many ferns you make. So, so now we're gonna move on to, as I said, the next size, which is going to be number, this is gonna be number six small. So I've already pre-measured this. And what this means on this one here, this is going to actually go through the number six hole, all right? So you see how it actually just physically just goes through the number six hole, all right? So it just wants to just go through the hole. So just make it so it, it just, you know, you don't have to push it through the hole. You see how it just, just goes through the hole on its own accord, okay? All right, and that's the size we're gonna use for the next size. So again, you would of course measure off however many of those balls you need, okay? Remember, I've already put the vegetable, um, the, the white fat, the vegetable shortening into the cavity. But when you're you know, making say 16, 20 ferns, if you do find that it starts to stick, um, you can just put a little bit more you know, vegetable fat shortening into there. But just remember, you do need to make sure that you clean this. Uh, don't leave the vegetable shortening on there because it can go just rancid and turn like almost a yellowy color. Now, when we do the next one, so we're gonna use exactly the same wire. Okay, so remember this is quarter length wire because the, the ferns are on fairly short wires. And when we move on to this next one, um, you'll see how on the medium size one, there is a little tiny island, okay? This little tiny island on the finished leaf will mean that you'll have this, like almost like a little uh, hole through the leaf. So it makes it look very realistic. You can see here in this area here, okay? So that has just one island. And when we move on to the large fur frond that has also an island as well, a larger island, again, which gives that sort of uh, open effect here. So you can see how you're gonna get this sort of, and it makes it look really natural. It doesn't make it look solid then. So we're gonna take the number um, six small. Now here, what we're gonna do is because your carrot needs to be about the size of the mold, I'm going to just hold my thumb and finger like this. So this wire is nearly the length of the mold. And then I'm just gonna take some egg white and I'm just gonna use the egg white, just brush off the excess egg. 
And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to brush the egg over that length of the wire. So where the wire is inserted, that will be the full length of that piece of wire. Because you want to make sure where we did the first one, we only need a little small amount of egg white. But on the larger ones, you want to make sure that the, the wire is sticking all the way down. So you see how I've got the egg white end of the wire there. So it's going to go into the mold there. So pretty much the wire goes right the way to the end. Just going to stretch this, all right? So this technique, when I teach, relate to like milking a cow or a goat, is a stretch pull, stretch pull technique. And you can see this is going to give me the length of this. I'm just going to mold around the bottom to secure the paste around the bottom of the wire. And again, you're just going to place this in to position. I'm just going to press this in with your cosmetic sponge. All right, I'm just going to just work this in. You can use your fingers as well here. Okay, and I'm just going to use my little flexi scraper. So this is, um, I said, flexi scraper here. Just going to use the little flexi scraper here. Just going to just scrape away this part here. And I can see the little island is visible there. So just when you press this in, you'll see the little island there. So I'm going to use my little companion tool just to hollow that. So when you press when you press that in, but if you have excess paste, if you measure too large, as I said, you just can scrape off. You'll see this used on the larger ones. But you just are going to um, expose the little island with the needle tip of the companion tool. Okay. And then again, just press the mold. This what this does when you press it like that, it just it pushes the paste against the wire. And usually, and as I said, if you were not going to vein the back, if you only had this part of the veiner, you just obviously you just pop it out. Um, and if you have the back vein, you're just going to lock that into place. That you'll find it just slips into position, and then you're just going to press this on the top. All right, all right, and this. But also, you can see how you're going to get this beautiful veining onto your fern. Okay, and again, you can just flex the mold. You should be able to on the smaller ones. Literally, just pull those out. Now, this is the size I use for mimosa, um, but you can see how it's actually got that physical little hole in there. So you see how it's going to have that very nice natural look. Again, you're just going to just mold this around the wire, and then again, we're just going to just pinch that to a slight shape. You can also, if you want to, you can literally just hold the fern like this and you can bend the wire slightly as well. So the wire will slightly curve, you see? And that's how you're going to do the medium ferns. And then again, these will just dry. So you just lay these onto your convoluted foam or crepe foam. And uh, you see how the leaves will then just dry like this. So this is your medium sized one. Large one is going to be done in the same way, and this will then finish up the sort of the side wired uh, ferns. So then we're going to move on to next size from your diagram here. So this is going to be number seven small. Okay, so we're going to take number seven small. So that's going to go through the number seven hole. Again, we're going to take just a little bit of vegetable shortening here. Okay, and then we're going to just remember work on one at a time. You can work on a little like silicone mat. That's going to get a little bit of traction on that. Okay, and then we're going to take your wire here. Now again, we're going to just take your, and see again, this is going to be the large one. So we want to, so you see I'm holding my thumb and finger there. And again, just going to take my um, egg white brush. And with my egg white, I'm just going to brush up the length of the wire. So this just ensures it sticks all the way down. Now with your egg white brush, just keep that in a wet washcloth flannel because that will stop the egg white getting, as I said, crusty. And then you're going to insert this into the carrot shape. Now on some of the Flower Pro, we put the wire in afterwards. And in fact, when I show you the uh, when I show you the largest fur, and I'm going to actually do it that way. But when I do the uh, the three small, medium, and large, and then the tip here, I put the wire in first. Okay, and again, just going to just, um, and if your paste feels a bit sticky, you can put a little bit of uh, corn flour, corn starch onto that as well. Okay, so just going to put this into the mold. Now again, just going to work this into the mold. So you see how I'm working down with my cosmetic sponge here. Just going to work this in, and remember, you can use your Dresden tool if you need to as well. But you want to make sure you stay within the perimeter of the mold. And then this one, I'm going to actually, you'll have a little bit of excess paste. So you're going to use a sawing action. So you're going to come from the top of this and you're just going to saw this down. So you see how what that's going to do is going to um, expose the island. 
and you're just going to press your wire back into into place all right so you're just going to press the wire into place there and then you can use your companion tool just to pull away that excess paste because when you use the saw in action it's going to push the paste push the paste to there but just press in with your finger all right so you see the wire will become uh, disappear into the into the uh, paste but use just to use a saw in action the flexi scraper is wonderful for a lot of my uh, flower pro and of course katie sue molds uh, to skim off the excess paste so now we're going to take the back vena okay so with our back vena here just going to line this up and you'll find it will just sort of slot into place just going to press on the top with your fingers like this all right and so you see how that's going to give you the beautiful veining you're going to just flex the mold now when you start getting onto the bigger molds like this now remember the wire is pretty much gone all the way to the end the wire is actually here and that's going to give support to the fern all right if you only put the wire in a little ways obviously it's going to be fragile on the end but when you come onto the larger ferns what i normally do is just peel the mold back and then just going to use my little scraper and you see how i'm just using my little scraper so this will then give you your fern all right so you have this beautiful fern and again you're just going to just pinch that now you see the wire comes right to the end there. The end is going to flop over a little bit, but that's also why we're putting it into the convoluted foam for support. And you can see here that this is going to give you your fern leaves. So you see how they'll just sort of like just go into the former like this. Okay. Um, so that is how we would make the wired side fern pieces. So now we're going to move on to the tip of the fern. So this will be like really the end of the fern. And these can be used in their own right, just as smaller ferns. So if you were doing a little small birthday cake, let's say with roses, and you wanted just a little bit of fern or a corsage type of orchid on top of a cake, you could use it just like this. But this is what we're actually going to use. So you'd only ever use one of these. And you see how uh, that's going to be at the end here of the fern. All right. And you can see here, this is the smaller version. So you have this, this one piece at the, at the end of the fern like this, all right? Um, now, when we do that, we're going to be using number eight small, but we're going to go up to a 26 gauge wire. I've cut this actually in third length. And so 26 is a little bit obviously thicker, you know, because wires, the higher the number, the thinner the wire and wires go in uh, even numbers. So 30 is the thinnest, 18 is the thickest. So we have a 26 gauge wire here because it's a little bit, we need a little bit more strength. Um, so we have here a number eight small size ball of paste. So this is going to be a number eight that goes through the hole. All right. And again, we're going to use the same sort of concept. We're going to, now this is a little bit curved. You'll see how I deal with that in a moment, but you're just going to hold your wire up against your fern like this. I'm going to put some little bit of egg white onto that length. This is like when I do my calories. If you watch my calorie tutorial, you'll see I do the same for the length of your center. A lot of times we just dip the end of the wire into egg white, but here we need the egg white to sort of stick the whole length of it so it doesn't come out. So again, we're just going to make this into, into a sausage shape. So it's going to make that the approximate length of the mold. I'm going to put the wire at the end that's got the egg white on. But remember, as I said earlier, it doesn't matter whether you use green or white wire for the ferns because these are going to be taped. I'm going to mold this around. You can pop just a little cornstarch on if it does get a little sticky. Now this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend it slightly. So it's just going to have a slight curve. It looks a little bit like a chili pepper because as you can see the shape of the, and you'll see how this has got two islands on it. It's got an island here and an island here. So you're just going to position your wire. So your wire comes out here like so. I'm just going to start working this down. I'm just going to work this down like this. And then you're just going to work your paste. You see how the island is going to become exposed here. It's going to work your paste down, but stay within the perimeter of the mold. And the other thing is the reason why I use the cosmetic sponge is this enables the paste to be able to stay, um, the paste will stay flat. So of course, when you then press the back vein on, that's quite important because if you've had to use your thumb or finger, you're going to have a concave shape, then the veiner isn't going to work on the back. So again, you're just going to just work this excess paste down. So on both of these, they will have a little bit of, um, you'll have to skim off that excess paste. All right. So again, remember a saw in action. So you're just going to just saw just gently like this, and this will just saw the paste. All right. 
And again, you're just gonna just press this back into the mold here. And then you just literally can just use your finger there and then the wire will just disappear in there. So don't worry when you skim it that the wire is exposed. But you see how the actual wire there is following the shape. So the wire is going down the middle here, it's going to between the two little islands, okay? And, but just gonna press this on. Just make sure, as I said, that it's, uh, you don't have any. And of course, if you had like a little bit too much paste on the top, you could also skim. You see how I'm just using that sort of technique, okay? And then press it in with your cosmetic sponge. And then we're going to, so on the two smallest, the small and medium, you won't have to do any skimming, but then just on the, as I said, the large and this tip, um, you will. Uh, then we're going to take the back vena. So again, our back vena is going to go into place. Okay. And it's going to press this on to the top here. And if you should take the vena off, like when you take this vena off, if there's an area where you haven't pressed, you'll be able to just press it back on top because it just almost like locks into place. You'll feel like it just drops into place there because you obviously have to think about what we have inside there is this. All right. So you need to come out wide enough to sort of emboss that onto the top. And you see how that's going to give you your beautiful vein in, all right? And then again here, because if we just pulled the wire, what would happen is the wire would just pull out of the leaf, all right? So you turn it upside down, taking your little flexi scraper. With your flexi scraper, you see how I'm just literally just releasing this, and this will come beautifully from the mold here like this, you see? Okay, just mold around the bottom. Again, just gonna pinch that like a slight taco shape. And then again, this is going to just go into to dry in the convoluted foam. So generally what I do is I sort of put it so it's like almost like just giving that nice natural shape, you see? So with your, with your convoluted foam, you see you could have your, your two here, I've almost put it into that little channel so you get this slight taco shape. And then the tip or you could have it, you can have it sort of come in over like the edge of it like that if you want the tip going down a little bit more. So you, because this gives obviously each piece of fur in a more natural look then, okay? And that is going to be the, um, the uh, tip, the large tip. And then the last piece is going to be the long fern here. Now this fern, like all of the ferns, you can do these unwired. Um, so when you're doing, for example, like a birthday cake and in my um, additional video where I show how to use this as embosses and for cookies and different other little decorations, um, you can totally make these pieces and use for decorations. So this fern uh, can be made like this without a wire into it. And of course, this one will be dusted, as you'll see in shortly. Um, and then, of course, you could use, say, maybe two of those on top of a buttercream cake with some buttercream roses. Um, you don't have to always wire these. But I'm going to show you how we wire this, all right? So we're going to put the do the wire here, all right? And so this is going to uh, give you the wired fern. And then this can be used as an alternative to, um, to this tip, all right? So, for example, like on this fern here, this has actually got as you can see, two small, two medium, and two large ferns, and then I have this one on the end. And it gives you a little bit more of a skinny fern, so if you needed something to be a little bit, um, sort of not a quite as wide, as you can see this one's a little bit wider, okay? This is done with the tip I've just demonstrated. So you have different options there depending on how you're going to use the ferns. Now when we do the large one here, uh, we're going to be using a number, uh, this is a number nine small, and we'll be using a 24 gauge wire. So this is um, a thicker wire up. And so you don't get confused, what I normally would suggest you do is, you know, do all your small ones, your medium and your large, which are all on 28 gauge quarter length wires. Then if you need to make, say, four of these, you're going to do four, just cut um, your wires into uh, thirds and then use four wires and then this one the same. Um, so anyway, so on this one, we're going to use same sort of technique, all right, we're going to just, but this one I'm actually have found is easier to put the wire in afterwards on this particular one here. Um, so we're going to just make this into, condition your paste, and then make this into a little sausage shape like this, okay. You can put a little corn flour cornstarch on this as well. Remember if your paste feels a little bit sticky, but you want to make sure you condition it. All right, so now we're going to start to work the paste into the end here. Now this one has got like a lot of, um, you know, a lot of islands into here. So you can just use your 
So you see how I'm just going to just work this into, so I'm just using my cosmetic sponge. You can also use a cosmetic wedge as well, but also remember you can use your Dresden tool, okay? Remember the Dresden tool is the wide end. This is called the Dresden veining tool. The veining tool is a thin end. Dresden tool is the wide end. And then what I'm gonna do here on this one, I'm going to use the skimming technique. So I'm going to actually use my, so remember when you use this, you're gonna use this skimming technique. So you see how I'm just using a, just a gentle sawing technique. Now, if your paste is too dry, like if your flower paste, gum paste is dry, or if, for example, it does break or it pulls away a little piece there, um, what you can do is you can just patch it. So like if you had like a little like a detached part here, you can just put a little extra piece of paste in there, press it in, and then you just reattach it. The other thing is I found that um, the little bit of vegetable fat, the vegetable shortening in here, also really helps as well because it almost makes the paste sort of stick because it's quite shallow. It almost sticks to the vegetable shortening, but then makes it easy to release. But this is a very nice leaf to use just like this. Um, you can use this like on the side of a cake. And of course, if you're gonna use this more on cakes and cookies, there really is no, as far as like using it without wires, there's really no need to vein the back, all right? But if we're, of course, you're going to do the uh, wires of ferns where you'd see the front and back. Now here, what I'm gonna do there is just gonna just bend the wire just very, very slightly. So it's just very, very slightly curved. All right, just really, really slight, but very, very gentle curve. And again, just gonna put some egg white onto there about the length I need. Okay, and then I'm gonna just sort of start to thread the wire in. And then my, my wire will just go, and I'll just sort of feel, I'm just keeping my finger on the top and my wire will go into the... Now, if you get to a point like where it doesn't sort of follow the curve, you just literally just don't pull it out and then just realign it back in there. So you can see how where the wire is actually here now. So it almost just burrows its way through. Just gonna repress on the top here, like so. And then we're going to now take your back veiner. Just gonna line this up on the top Obviously, I'm going to press this over the top here, like so, to vein all of that detail. So just use your fingers here. Sometimes we use like an acrylic press. Uh, you will actually see the acrylic press used in the other video on using the ferns. Um, but when you're doing this, I'm just using my fingers like almost pressure points over here. So just almost like walk over the, and that will give you the veining. And you see how you're gonna get this exquisite veining onto the back of your fern, okay? Now, again, because of the, uh, this has got a stronger wire in, so again, you don't just yank the wire. So on all of these type of larger ones, you're just gonna just peel this back. It's gonna, it's gonna use your, you see how I'm just using my flexi scraper? Now, if it, if it sticks into there, what that means is you needed a little bit more, um, you needed a little bit more uh, vegetable shortening into there, okay? And on this one here, okay, you're just gonna just take that and again, you're just gonna lay this onto, now this one is gonna be obviously a little bit more floppy here. So you're just gonna just take that, support that, and just gonna lay that onto your, just to lay that on there, just to give you the nice natural shape. And then you can just use your companion tool here. Just gonna just support that into the, into the fern like that. Okay, and that's how you do that, that larger fur. That one does take a little practice, you know, getting the wire in there. Um, but as I said, it's just very, very slightly curved. Remember this one, once you get the wire in, you bend it like a chili pepper. Um, obviously the other three are straight. Um, and so that's sort of the components of the fern. Now, um, what we then do is you're just gonna let all of these components dry. Now, um, I use a food dehydrator a lot. So I set it at 115. Uh, Fahrenheit about 45 centigrade. Uh, if you just you can just pop the whole thing on the fern on the foam in your food dehydrator and just put it in there for about 45 minutes. They'll be totally dry. Um, or you could leave this for two or three hours in ambient temperature. Remember, this is going to be dependent on your humidity level of your workspace. And then uh, once they're dry, we're going to move on to the next part, which is going to be assembly and coloring. So I'm going to start off by taping. I'm going to use some quarter width tape. So I'm just rotating this into a tape cutter. So this will divide the tape into four. 
and then we'll divide it into half. So I'm going to start off with some quarter width tape and you just would pull the tape off of here. And then of course you can just unravel this tape. Remember, keep your floral tape always in like a zip top bag when you've um, cut it because it will dry out. And we're gonna use quarter width tape. You can also of course do this with a pair of scissors as well. And what we're gonna do is gonna tape down about two and a half centimeters, about one inch on each of the wires here. So I, what I've done is I've laid my, um, my components onto a towel or washcloth flannel, which is what I normally do. And when you, when you tape, what you're gonna do here is you're going to actually hold your tape at an angle. So your tape is gonna be held at an angle like this. And then you're just gonna just tape and gonna go around with your floral tape. And then you're gonna slide this up to the bottom of the leaf. You're gonna come down about two and a half centimeters, about an inch and break off. So you're just gonna tape the base of the component. So you see how you're going to take the, so here you can see how you're gonna go at an angle. Now you wanna keep a little tension on your tape. This makes it sticky, but you're just gonna go at an angle with your tape like this, and you're gonna go around and it will just get attached, all right? And you're gonna push this up. If your fingers are a little sticky, you can take also a little cornstarch on your fingers. And so you're just gonna continue with these. So at an angle, we're gonna go around, gonna slide this up, now everybody when they first start is a little floral tape challenge, but floral tape, you need to stretch it to make it sticky. So you can stretch it as you go. And then we will also do the same on the front here, but see how you're just gonna then slide this up and then you will also do your larger one here. Okay, so just gonna bring this up to the top there like so. so that's how you would tape it. Now, what we're gonna do is um, you, of course, if you were doing a lot of ferns, okay? So when I was assembling these ferns, um, I had, of course, a lot of components. You're just going to separate things into groups so you know sort of how many you're gonna use. So I'm going to use on this fern, I'm going to show in this um, particular video, I'm gonna use four small ferns, four medium ferns, two large ferns, okay? So we're gonna start off and you're gonna use tweezers. So I'm gonna use some fine tweezers here. And then what I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna just bend here about five millimeters, about a quarter of an inch down, just slightly at a slight angle. So just gonna come out. So you see, I have a little bit of the fern uh, wire showing here. We're gonna take the, these. So you see what I'm doing is I want to think of a bit like a Christmas tree shape. So you see, I want to have about a quarter of an inch here. All right, so about a quarter of an inch, about five millimeters. And then, um, as I said, you're going to then just take that so that it extends out. So you see how you create this natural shape, all right? So you can see how, so the first ones are gonna go in like this. And then you're just gonna come back with your quarter width tape. You're just gonna just go around like a piece of string and this will get you started. So you see how this is gonna give you your, your first two ferns. Now then the next ones will come out just a little bit further. So you're gonna come out just a little tiny bit further. You see, so when you put these ones in, which are gonna come in just a little bit further down. So it's gonna tape down just a little ways. These will come in here. So you see how they're going to sort of just continue coming out. So you see how you're gonna want the angle. So as you go down, each one will become a little bit, um, as I said, longer here. But just work on your washcloth, panel here. And just open this up. All right, so now we're going to go on. Now, when we go on to the medium ones, because the medium ones are longer, we're actually gonna start off with the first, first set of medium ones being pretty much bent just right at the bottom. So you don't really have any extension there. You're just gonna just bend them right at the bottom of the paste part here. But nothing is set in stone. And when you're doing this, you, but you see how I'm, what we're looking for is we're looking as we come down that it will come out like this. It's gonna be my next set. But we use quarter width tape here because the quarter width tape won't add a lot of bulk to this. And then my next set of medium ones will just have about, gain about, you know, so I'm talking here about, as I said, about a quarter of an inch, all right, so about six millimeters, all right, so just a, or so. Just gonna give that a little bit of and then these ones will come in here. So you see how it just extended a natural length of the firm. And then we're gonna come down just a little way and you see how I'm coming down just a little way each time. 
All right, and then I'm going to then do the large ones. And again, the large ones, your first ones are gonna be bent. Now, of course, you could have two or three sets of these, but your first ones, just like the medium ones, you bend them right at the bottom, all right, because we're naturally, um, you have longer. So you see how that is going to create that. So you can look at, you almost get that sort of Christmas tree shape, all right, that sort of cone, cone shape. And then of course, then if you were doing, say, four large ones, the next ones would have a little bend about a quarter of an inch, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch. It just, you know, just put them in and see that they look, look correct, all right? And just when you're bending them, of course the wire goes all the way to the end, but just when you're bending them, use your finger like this. Don't grab the tip of the fern because the tips of the fern don't have the wire right to the tip. And then at this point here, we're gonna add a, gonna add a 20 gauge wire. Now when you're doing just like, for example, a small fern like this one here, or if you were gonna just do, say one tip, two small, two medium, two large, you could use a 22 gauge, which is thinner, but I'm gonna, because this is a larger fern, I'm gonna use a 20 gauge. And I'm gonna put the 20 gauge wire right here where this starts. Just gonna around just a couple of times with my quarter width tape. And I'm just gonna break that off. And then I'm going to then change out to some half width tape. Because it's easier when you're taping a long uh, area like this uh, to use half width tape. So then we're just gonna, just gonna go with your half width tape and we're just gonna tape down the wire. Now, if you were doing the ferns on very long wires, meaning that they were gonna say stand up beside a cake, all right, um, you know, when you actually stand, stand the fern, when you stand the fern up, if the top of it droops a little bit, you know, you can, or if you want it to be more stable, you could add another, if you want to put another 22 gauge or 20 gauge wire there. It's really gonna depend on how it's gonna be used. If you're doing the ferns in a spray, or like on the hoop I showed at the beginning of this video, you don't need to, of course, add extra wires. But if you're wanting these more standing up, think of how ferns grow, you could add an extra, 22 or 20 gauge wire just to give your stem more stability. But that was all gonna be depending on how this is gonna be used. And here you can see you have your beautiful fern. Now, as I explained, you can also on this one here, what I did there, which is gonna be a little skinnier, I just used uh, this at the tip and then I've got two small, two medium, two large, okay? So you get that longer, more slightly more slender looking fern. And uh, so that is how we put the ferns. Now, next step is going to be to move on to the coloring, which is gonna bring the ferns to life. So for the coloring of the ferns, we have many options. I'm going to use a, gonna show you several different color variations. Um, on the um, ones I showed you, the main ferns, I've used a gray. So this color is called dove gray. And if you don't have a gray, you can just take black and add some white corn flour or cornstarch to it. So I'm gonna use this gray. Now, gray works really well, and of course gray is a big trend color. It works very well with natural um, arrangements. So I'm gonna use the, um, this is an angled flat brush. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just brush a gray stripe down the middle of each. I've already done one side. We're just gonna brush a, green, a gray stripe down the middle of each of the fern. Uh, and then gonna do also the same on the back as well. because you just need this almost like a stripe coming down. I said this is gonna come down each of the sections. Okay, and then of course you could do that on all of your ferns and then your excess powder, you can put that back into your container. And then you can swap out your napkin or paper towel because then you can use the same technique when we do the green. Now this color here is foliage green um, and, but there are lots of um, options on greens. You know, you can start off with, you know, you could do, if you wanted a brighter color, this is for example, like a lime green, we have an apple green, we have a moss green, we have a forest green. You could do a sort of more of a eucalyptus color. So if you want that sort of, uh, sort of gray blue color, you could do this. Um, so there are, as I said, many com combinations of different colors, depending on how you're gonna use them, what time of year and what you're gonna be putting them with. Like if you were doing, say, with pale pink roses, you might decide you go for this more mossy color. If you're doing something more tropical or more vibrant in color, more of a sort of a limey green. Anyway, so we're gonna take the foliage green here. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just brush this around the edge. So I'm just gonna use my brush. I'm just sort of brushing down each side of the green here. And you might need to just sort of move the, the ferns out from each other just, just while you dust them. We're just gonna just gonna brush the green down the side. And 
And then we're just gonna do the same on the little small ones at the top here. So it's gonna just work down the side of there. And then on the tip there, you're just gonna go around using your brush coming from the outside to the inside. You will also do the same on the back side as well. So your color really is just the same on front and back. Now some, some ferns have, for example, like a different color back, a lighter back. So you could also dust the whole of the back gray and then you could do just like the green on the front. But I like to do this sort of shading of color. So this is a color combination I use a lot, but just to show you some other variations on this, all right? Um, so again, of course you could put this back into the container. I was gonna take a new napkin on the top here, there we go. Um, so another option you can use is instead of using gray, you can use like a super pearl. So this is just a pearl dust. So for example, ferns like Japanese painted fern have more of a slightly uh, sort of a highlight of like almost like a pearlescent. So you're gonna use the, I'm using a small brush here. So you see how, whereas I did the gray, you're gonna use the, gonna use the we're gonna use the, uh, the pearl, okay? And then you could, of course, like for example, take a darker green. I'm gonna show here a forest green. But you know, just play around with your colors, but you could do this obviously front and back, but I'm just showing you, because when I steam this, you'll see how this will give you almost this sort of like, a little bit more of a sort of highlight. You see how you're gonna get this. So we do the pearl dust down the middle, and then we, as I said, we'll put the forest green around the edge. And then on the ones in the, the shown in the book there, they're sort of almost like bracken. So especially obviously when we think of autumn fall time. So when I do the sort of bracken, I'm going to actually use autumn gold and chocolate brown. So I'm gonna take this autumn gold color. So just like we did where we did the gray, I'm just gonna do like little stripes coming down with the, do this on the back as well with the autumn gold. Of course you have that sort of green undertone there. And you're gonna take a little bit of chocolate brown so then you're gonna go around the, the edge of this with some chocolate brown. I'm gonna do like a chocolate brown stripe down the middle as well. So you see how you'll have those sort of like colors, you see? So you're gonna get these nice sort of like autumn sort of colors. So again, you know, so depending on how you're gonna use the ferns would be dependent on how you would um, color them. Now, when we do a lot of foliage, um, as many of you have watched many of my YouTube tutorials, but when we do a lot of foliage, we typically use like a spray lacquer or a leaf glaze. When you're doing ferns, a little bit like my wedding foliage on my eucalyptus, I'm just going to just steam these only because ferns are not really shiny in real life. They're not real shiny like rose leaves or magnolia leaves or other types of leaves. So we're gonna just take the steam so this is a small clothes steamer, but you can use also a tea kettle. And just gonna just gonna just steam this for a few seconds. And what this is gonna do is going to set the color. Uh, when you have, when you are steaming, you want to stand it into a styrofoam uh, block because you don't want to actually place the leaf down because it will stick to a napkin or a towel. But you see how then you're gonna get this lovely color coming through here. And you see when I do the one with the pearl dust on, I just did the front of this one. But also remember when you're doing, uh, when you're coloring the fern, you don't always have to color the back if you're not gonna see it. You know, if this was going flat against a cake or on the side of a cake, but you'll see here how you have, um, you know, this just shows you some color variations here. Okay, so you have this, you know, the gray, uh, the gray with the green. You obviously, this one is gonna have a little bit more of a highlight because you've got the pearl dust there and you have more of the bracken sort of colors. Now, of course, they will look quite shiny when you first steam them, but then they will develop this more natural look. Um, and as I said, you can spray lacquer them, but do it very lightly, but I typically prefer to have just that more natural look on my fern leaves. Um, so that's how you would uh, color the fern leaves. So I hope you've enjoyed this Flower Pro Fern video. We'll have a lot of fun using the ferns on cakes with sugar flowers and different other applications. Remember to check out my other video on using ferns for cakes and cookies, where I'll be showing you other ways you can use the fern mold. Until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes, see you soon, bye.